Hard Ticket to Hawaii is some guy's mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world exploding toilet snakes. It starts off letting you know what you're in for with this high level dialogue. You should get in, Rowdy. The water is great. I've got better things to do with my body temperature. If you're trying to figure out what that means, then good fing luck. While you're wasting time with that, these two come across a group of awesome people just trying to have a good time and wear awesome shirts. But they're dressed like idiots, and I'm pretty sure he's wearing two belts, so they haul ass out of there. Get back to the boat. Sorry, nerds. Oh. Too fing late. Oh. Ah. If you're also wondering what that was about, then this isn't the movie for you. Now we get another important scene in a shipping warehouse that specializes in fragile glass and live snakes. They have a real laid-back attitude and not only wear jeans with sandals, but their forklift drivers are four times the legal limit. Excuse you, you inconsiderate prick. These two are DEA agents. Drug enforcement agents can't afford to get soft. Which we know because of their official uniforms. They do what the DEA does best, transport honeymooners and live cargo. On one hand, them being armed with nunchucks is badass, but on the other... And out of all the actors who played James Bond, who do you like best? I'd give them all equal time. F*** you. The couple tells them everything about this sounds really far-fetched and stupid and to please go away right now. On their way back, a magical tiny helicopter shows up and gives them a box of diamonds. But oh shit, these guys are back and after giving some really confusing instructions... Freeze! She proves that the nunchucks are just for show and she knows exactly how to use them. Ah! Also, throwing stars because fuck you. Ah! But she only has the one, so she'll take that back. Thank you very much. Ah! Then they fly back to their golf course airport and play with the diamonds during topless jacuzzi time. These must be worth a fortune. Just another day for the DEA. Then the movie gives us this. I care for you a great deal. Trust me, Charlotte. You practically raped me last night. And oh, thank God, none of this is ever mentioned again. Now that we got that final scene out of the way, we're back to them doing normal things like putting diamonds in the freezer. After all, it is ice, isn't it? No, it's f***ing not when these robbers break in. <gasps> Where are the diamonds? What diamonds? I think he means the ice, and you better listen because they also know how nunchucks work. Thankfully, someone tells them that looks really f***ing stupid, and now it's a cap gun, which is still somehow better. At that moment, Carter Verone sees a snake across the parking lot and completely loses his sh**. Oh, oh they recognize those cowardly shots anywhere. He's in trouble. We'll be back. So if you could do them a favor and not leave, that would be great. But sorry, the best they can do is run outside and shoot him in the fucking face. Step and shot, move it! And sure, to them, he's just a guy standing there, but they're DEA, so they do whatever the fuck they want. I really lost it, didn't I? Then Angela Lansbury calls them over the radio and lets them know the snake they got has mutant powers or something. Infected by deadly toxins from cancer infested rats. Which I'm pretty sure isn't how that works. So they tell him to eat shit. No we don't. Because they f***ed that all up. So now it's not their problem. Now we get the most important scene in the entire movie. Man, I sure love soul food. Right on, bro. Anyways, now these guys show up and talk about normal things. My first wife used to mow the lawn stark naked. While normal things happen all around them. Man, he must be smoking some heavy doobies. I really don't think that's what it is. But this hasn't been normal enough, so they crank it up a notch. 
now it's the old middle-aged guy on his skateboard with a blow-up doll and a single-fire shotgun move where the one shot goes through the windshield, the driver, and a rear tire. Luckily, all that's in that area are his heart and lungs. But I'll live. It's not their first rodeo, and they know the only thing that can take out William H. Macy doing sweet skateboarding tricks is a fucking rocket launcher. <laughs> and oh yeah, fuck you too. You know, normal everyday shit. Now we're back with the Honeymooners, who are still in the same place, like two days later. And oh thank god, the Super Snake f***ing murders them, <laughs> so they can't waste any more of our time. Then the movie gives us the shocking twist that this lady, wearing two and a half tons of makeup, and with such feminine hands and voice, Yes, I know. Is actually a man. While it doesn't have anything to do with anything, neither does anything else in this movie, so fucking deal with it. So now they kidnap this lady for what I'm sure are stupid reasons. What are you trying to do? While they're doing reverse product placement because Sony didn't pay them nearly enough to not use their product in the movie. Anyways, sumos! And that's the last we see of them. Now they think she has the diamonds for some reason. Where are the diamonds? I don't know. Even though he saw the DEA agents take them and they shot him in the face. But f it, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> so they bring in the big guns and we get another incredible display of nunchuck expertise. Knowing she's not Steven Seagal and can only take so much stupidity, he plans a daring rescue but has to go through distracting nose hair guy from earlier. He tries the intimidation route, but after jogging flamboyantly with his man purse, doesn't work for some reason. You ain't allowed here. Take off. He says he's a thrower, not a shower. He's just a thrower. And challenges him to frisbee. Oh yeah? Let's see you throw one. But holy sh**, nose hair guy is no f***ing joke and pulls off some tricks you wouldn't believe. So he tells her to go away because she's about to get crazy, but she just stares at him like a goddamn idiot. So he throws the frisbee, hoping she'll chase it like a dog, and thank god she does. So do you, pilgrim. Okay, great. Please f*** off now. Anyways, this man is a frisbee god and he'll never beat him straight up. So he pulls out his secret weapon, a different frisbee with paper on it, and shows him the hard way that paper cuts can be a total bitch. While that's one of the dumbest deaths ever, it's only the third dumbest in this movie, so he gives a very dainty fist pump before frolicking away with his Merce and Bikini briefs. Frisbee guy was the only thing holding back an all-out assault, so now they're free to attack with an ultralight, a jeep, and some guy in a red shirt who's the key to the entire operation. Their master plan is to have her fly around and throw grenades at her own team while he walks backwards through the compound. But these guys are on another level and manage to outsmart them with the highly advanced just standing there move. You freak! But luckily, what he lacks in shirts, he makes up for in awkward crescent kicks. <laughs> then it's just a matter of some inside close quarter rocket launching <laughs> and blowing up one bitch helicopter. Take him out! And the day is won. Until they remember their goal was to take out this guy and they accomplish jack shit. So he just takes off out the back on a sweet dirt bike. If you think he's gonna go take him out, then f you, you haven't been paying attention. We never find out where he went, but Carter Verone gets tired of waiting and eventually goes to them. 
the diamonds. Oh yeah, forgot about those stupid diamonds, but she jacked him from that tiny helicopter fair and square, and this closet has a lock for some reason. So go f yourself. While well, he could easily break through just by pulling kinda hard, there's no time for that. So instead, he decides to cut his way in, starting from the top. 24 minutes and two breaks later, he finally makes it through just to get harpooned, which is such a dick move. That's when her DEA training kicks in and she just assumes he's probably dead and walks away from him and his weapon. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Okay, fine, now he might be dead, so let's leave again to go freshen up. At this point, she realizes how stupid this dead, not dead thing is and that the audience stopped giving a shit a long time ago. Now she thinks she can win us back with the old snake exploding toilet move and she's never been more right. The snake has had enough of poor man's Eric Roberts because Eric Roberts is already poor man's Eric Roberts. I understand. And takes poorer man's Eric Roberts out with one bite. While mutant toilet snake is now the best character in this by a wide margin, he's also too good for this shitty movie and when dipshit crashes into her home for some reason, he takes a rocket to the face and goes out like a total boss. Now the movie's over. Just kidding, no it's not, F you again. They're going to take out this old guy who I guess is the owner of the diamonds they stole and it's not clear what the DEA has to do with any of this. But nothing's made sense yet, so why start now? After beating the shit out of the bodyguard by using nunchucks <laughs> like I imagine they use them in prison. <laughs> The old man's no rookie and puts their prison chucks to shame by using his sword like a javelin and earning his place as the number one dumbest death in the entire movie. Now the movie can finally end on the twist reveal that she orchestrated the killing of everyone so she could keep the diamonds. Anyone who could identify the diamonds is dead, the diamonds belong. But nobody f***ing cares, they're just glad this piece of shit is over. 